This presentation shows simulation results of the impact of photovoltaic arrays or PVs and plug-in electrical vehicles on Pecan Street's smart grid. My name is Fabian Uriarte and I will guide you through the rest of this work done in conjunction with Dr. Robert Hebner, both from the Center for Electromechanics of the University of Texas at Austin. This slide shows the smart grid's distribution layout or electrical distribution layout. At the top, we have the substation with both of its transformers, each of which feeds several feeders. One of the feeders that leaves the substation going in this direction feeds the entire Mueller community, which is where the smart grid is. Each phase out of this lateral serves between 20 and 40 different transformers. Let's take a look at what each of these transformers serves. Each transformer is served from one of the phases, either A, B, or C. In this case, we have one transformer shown here. And what is typically connected behind this transformer are eight meters. Eight meters in which each meter here serves a combination of a photovoltaic array, always a home, and sometimes an electrical vehicle. Some meters do not have PVs behind them, but some have energy storage instead, or a combination of both. In this community, there are at most 11 meters per transformer, and at least four. What is shown here is one typical combination. What should also be highlighted is what this transformer sees is different than what this transformer sees and can be different from what this transformer sees. And also that these transformers could be different sizes as well. So let's take a look at a case study in which we will simulate the presence of 735 homes, 178 PVs, 106 electrical vehicles, 98 single phase cables and the cables are really important to simulate the voltage drops and the power losses in the system. We will include 94 transformers. Now in this case we will not include energy storage at the residential level or at the community level. This will be included in a follow-up video. So what we show here in this presentation it are only the assets boxed here which includes the homes, PVs, EVs, cables, and transformers for the entire community. Let's look at the simulation results. The home consumption here is a compilation of real data which was fed into the simulation. What we show here is 24 hours worth for 735 homes. And what this chart here is showing us is the typical consumption in kilowatts for the entire day for all homes. If we look at the same data from the top, we can see the duration of certain events. If we look at the peaks as shown here, we can also appreciate that there are only one minute worth. Now the data shown here should be noted that it is in intervals of one minute. If we look at the same data from the side, we can see how uncorrelated this data is. The peaks and valleys of each home do not match each other, and this is convenient in the sense that when you aggregate the homes, they don't stack up proportional to the number of homes. If we show this, what this aggregation looks like, uh, we have here on the right the power factor, which is shown by this light blue curve, is shown on the right axis. We show the total power, which is the apparent power. We show the real power consumed by the homes, and we show the reactive power. This is aggregate, so this is for all 735 homes and does not include PVs or EVs. We can look at the same data for the PV generation, and it should be noted that this is real data that was fed into the simulation. What this plot here shows is for 24 hours, the generation of all PVs included in the model. Now this shows here that the peaks are different for each of the PVs, and they're typically in the neighborhood of four to six kilowatts. If we look at the same data from the right, we can actually see the duration of the generation. And we see that some homes or some PVs actually start generating earlier in the day and some others start ge uh, stop generating later in the day. 
this shows the difference between south facing PVs which start earlier and west facing PVs which stop generating later in the day and the scales are here. If we look at the same data from the side we can see how uncorrelated this data is. But if we aggregate the data we can see that the peak the peak corresponds to about half a megawatt. If we look at the plug-in electrical vehicle consumption we show also for 24 hours what happens to all 106 vehicles included in the model. Some charge at 240 volts, some charge at 120 volts. Those that charge at 240 volts have a shorter charge duration and this can be appreciated here by looking at the duration or the lengths of the red areas. Those vehicles that charge at 120 volts actually extend through the night and come over into the next day and some even stop at 8 in the morning. This depends on the state of charge of the battery and at what time people come home and start charging. Now I will assume that everybody starts charging after 4 p.m. for simplification purposes. If we look at the same data from the side we can see this 4 p.m. threshold start time and we can see that the 240 volt charges are really really brief when compared to the 120 volt charging levels which extend through the night. If we aggregate this data we can see a peak consumption of 145 kilowatts approximately and the problem with this is that it occurs between 6 and 8 p.m. Uh, some of the 120 volt charging tapers off as you go into the morning but the what's interesting is that this charging unfortunately coincides with the peak demand on the distribution and this is a problem that we're also addressing here. So let's look at the total power demand for the community and this is looking from the lateral into the community. If we divide the, these charts into before and after we can appreciate a, a significant difference. If we look first of all at the power factor which is shown on the right axis here and compare it to what happened after the PVs and EVs came up uh, penetrated the community we can see a significant droop in power factor. This is because the real power if we compare here the real power which is shown in green and we'll call this P1 and we'll call this one after P2 if we compare P1 and P2 we see a significant droop and this is because the PVs are providing a significant amount of real power and therefore reducing the demand from the utility. If we look at the reactive power here, which we'll call this Q1 and this one Q2, both in blue, the reactive power stays the same and this is because the PVs at the residences are not generating any reactive power. And we can also notice the total power we call S1 versus what happens S2 afterwards and we can see a droop due to the reduction in real power. Now the peak here actually worsened a little bit and this is because of the electrical vehicles but most of the effect is shown in the middle of the day and this is actually due to the PVs producing reverse flows. These charts so show what happened to the transformers before and after the PVs. If we look at the uh, profile for 24 hours for all 94 transformers before and after, we can make a line here to divide this, we can see the consumptions for each of the transformers. So for instance, if we look at transformer, say, 60, sorry, 70, for instance, we look at we can see that the consumption before lies between this uh, lighter lighter blue region here and uh, some and, and going into some of the some of the yellow parts as well. Uh, if we look at the same transformer after the PVs came online and after the EVs were plugged in, we can see a significant change here, especially in the middle of the day. And this corresponds to negative flows which is in the negative region perhaps between 30 and 40 percent by working backwards. So if one compares what happened after and what happened before one can see that before the transformer was probably working in the 10 percent region and now it's working in the negative 40 percent. So some of the transformers are working more 
and some are actually working less. Another way to show the change in transformer utilization is by looking at the percent increase and or reduction in, in, in percent VA or actual total power throughput. The green areas here show no change and this corresponds to zero percent. That means that the, the transformers have not really changed their throughput by a significant amount. This uh, could be 0.5%, it could be 1.5%, it's only a few percent and therefore it shows in green. If we look at uh, some of the other colors here, lighter green, this is due to the EVs charging through the night and this causes a 2% increase which is shown here. Uh, if we look at this transformer which looks like it's transformer 55, we can see that the change as shown here is about a 20% decrease in transformer usage and this uh, blue region here is uh, can be verified with this color bar on the side. If we look at uh, another PV, let's say transformer 47, uh, it shows that the PVs produce an increase in utilization. So if we compare two different transformers some are working more and some are working less. If we look over here on the right, another way to look at the usage is to compare the after and before utilization ratio. If we take a threshold of one and anything below one means that the transformer is being used less and anything above one means that the transformer is used more than before we can see at a glance which one which transformers have changed their input or their throughput and by how much if we look at the transformer shown here for instance this one shows at about 0.3 so this corresponds to a 30 percent of the previous usage if we look at another transformer this transformer in particular looks like it's going to about six times its previous use but this only occurs in this segment of the day and it's due to the PVs. If we look at uh, most of the blue region means uh, one and this means that the transformer is being used the same as before and some other transformers are being used less. So what can be concluded from these two comparisons or two ways to analyze the transformer usage is that the PVs increase and decrease transformer utilization both also that the EV impact is pretty small in this case. Now this is a function of the transformer size, charging level, number of electrical vehicles, and the charge mode, uh, meaning that if it's controlled or uncontrolled. So there's several factors affecting the EV impact. In this case, the footprint of the electrical vehicles is not so significant, mainly because the transformers are sized correctly to begin with. And what can be concluded from this chart on the, on the right is that diurnal usage is at times more and at times less, and this varies by transformer. The smart grid of this project is actually provided by Pecan Street Inc. And here are the collaborators from Pecan Street, and their web address uh, is pecanstreet.org. Uh, we are also working with professors and students from the University of Texas some colleagues from Austin Energy and additional researchers from the Center for Electromechanics as well. This concludes the summary of the simulation results obtained so far. If you have any questions please email us or if you want to learn about more about the research that we do and what we have done in the past please visit us at this website shown here. Thank you very much.